Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the 2023 New Jersey International Film Festival Filmmaker Q&A session. Today we have three, four filmmakers actually to talk about their three films that are shorts. So this is kind of a shorts film panel. And we have Evan Bode, who's the, who's the maker of A Spot for Frog, a wonderful short kind of quasi experimental animation short. And then we have Alam Virk, who is the director of Boxed, which is a crazy short film that has experimental tendencies. And then we have, of course, Tommy's, the film from the UK by Brian Fairburn. And hopefully I got it right. And then Carl Eccleston, they're both from London, UK. Uh, Evan is fr from Colorado and um, Alam is a local filmmaker from Roselle Park in New, Jer in New Jersey. Um, uh, so welcome everybody. Hi. Hello. All right, so we have three wonderful films that are quite different from each other. And initially I scratched my head and I said, why I put these three films together? And then I realized why. And my job is that we got 711 films that were submitted and the jury selected 35, which is really very competitive, means only 5% of what we got are being shown. And so your films were highly scored by the judges and that's how we were able to put them together. Um, Evan's film, A Spot for Frog is, um, well, I'll let you tell us, what is your film about, Evan? Sure, yeah. Um, so my film is about a high school student who's looking for a place to eat lunch. Um, cafeteria is kind of an overwhelming space for them, so they're kind of sitting elsewhere in the school. Um, but I'm kind of thinking about this as, as, as a metaphor for their place in, in society or in, in the larger world that they're looking for. Um, and they're kind of using art to, to explore their, their experiences and their place in the world, which I kind of bring through animation in the film. Wonderful. What about you guys, Brian and Carl? Tell us a little bit about Tommy's, which I really think should be a feature film. I wanted to see so much more after I watched your film. I'm a huge fan of um, Peter Greenaway's film, so I'm sure you guys know, who's a BFI person. Um, and since your film was made under the auspices of the British Film Institute, I think there's got to be a connection there. Tell us about your film. What is it about? Uh, so it's about a woman in uh, Regency era London um, mm -hmm. who um, discovers on her way to a ball um, uh, that her husband um, has been involved in a notorious gay scandal. Mm -hmm. And um, we based it on a real scandal, the Beer Street Coterie scandal, um, which was a, a huge public display of homophobia in the early 19th century. Mm -hmm. I uh -oh. uh, mob justice and um, rituals of public oh, shaming yeah. and the kind of the human instinct to tar and feather and how that can manifest in, in different situations. Wonderful. I also thought of the liaison dangereuse. Um, yes. I, I was a French PhD candidate until I switched over to making films. And um, I, I it just kind of felt that that nastiness that we see. But we'll talk more about your film in a second, too. Alam, tell us about Boxed. Yeah, um, Boxed is is about a person who relies on consumerism um, to fill his inner void. Mm. And when things don't go, you know, as planned, when his deliveries don't arrive on time, he just descends into madness. And it's basically a look at modern society, how we're so disconnected from each other and we just rely on material goods to fill that void only, you know, but in the end it never does and it only gets worse and worse. So that's pretty much where where my character lives. Um, and that's, it's essentially his journey into being consumed as a consumer. Aha, so now you found out the other way that I, cause we had a lot of other short films and so this kind of disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement of society was the theme that I, one of the themes that I thought brought your very different films, different looking films, um, different themes came out of that as well. But that was the main one that I thought made sense. And so um, I wanted to read some of the judges comments, which is something I haven't done in one of these Zooms in a while. But um, all three films, I knew pretty early on we were going to screen these. Um, the judges are um, film students 
And then we have academics like myself, previous winners, and members of the press and media that are our judges. They're like 30 people. And usually at least four people would watch each film. And so they are then ranked. Um, and then there's, you know, this thing goes on for like months. And then as we got your films, the, the judges have to score films from zero to 10. And your films on average scored eights and nines and a couple of tens in some instances. And when that happens, then I know for sure we're going to show them. And so here are some of the comments that I got for Evan's film. Uh, the animations in this film genuinely added to the overall um, look and made me appreciate the storyline so much more. Really loved it. Um, another person said really fun to watch. So I think the you the mix of animation and the plight of this young person who i guess is non-binary correct and so she's kind of dealing with being left out and mm. the ramifications of that so the judges really liked the film and it scored really highly boxed got a lot of praise for the lighting i mean this kind of yellowish lighting that you have in your film and then with the red uh, sofa and and somebody wrote about that. It was really eerie and the action and the actor did a good job of conveying madness. So uh, Andy Whitman, I guess, should get many kudos since he is the yeah. lead actor and terrific film uh, that showed great creativity. Another judge wrote, there, there's so much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And then for Tommy's, the writing, the acting were superb. Um, I can't even read my own writing. Every, every act, inter, every interaction between each character adds more layer to the story. Set design and costumes were amazing, and they there's so much more. I I'd like to know, and I'd like to follow up maybe with the folks from Tommy since I just read your judges' comments. That do you plan to expand this into a larger film? I mean, I wanted to see so much more. I, I was a little, I was hoping that I could see a feature version of this. Have you thought about that? I, I don't know if that's possible. We have. <laughs> We've written a feature version of it, um, oh. but we're also just a bit exhausted by it um, because it was quite a long journey to get this film made, um, especially as a short. Um, so yes, you know, the, a feature version of this film does exist, but it's probably not going to be our first feature, just because for, for budget reasons, you'd need you'd need a you need a lot of money to make this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I wanted to ask you about the costumes and the actors. Tell us a little bit about um, Georgine, Georgina, who's played by Sarah Winter. She's yeah. the lead. Um, tell us about all of the, this ensemble that you put together. Yeah, I mean, I think you've hit, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, this is very much an ensemble piece. Um, you know, casting process took took several months, because, especially because of COVID. But I think it was just like, it was like pieces of a puzzle. And I think every time we watch the film, the, just the sort of the subtleties and the nuances and what all these actors were kind of doing with their performances. Um, I mean, Sarah's performance in particular is, is incredibly, incredibly understated. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, we were lucky to have a really great casting director on board, uh, Jeremy Zimmerman. Um, and uh, he worked on Tar, actually. I, I noticed when we were watch, watching Tar. And uh, wow. yeah, so we, we collaborated with him and his team to find kind of through a, a mixture of open auditions yeah. and um, kind of our own sleuthing um, to find the exact chemistry because you've got a lot of characters to establish in only 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, Sarah Winter, we'd seen in um, a show Versailles. Mm. Um, Claudia Jolly is a, a, a West End musical theatre actress. So, uh, so Susie Trailing, so who plays Trailing. Fanny. And we were lucky, the first person we cast was Marion Bailey, who was uh, Peter, um, who was Mike Lee's partner and longtime collaborator. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that that leads me to the second theme that brought your films together, that all of them are kind of we clue. Um, they're all in one space. Yeah. With some exceptions in Evan's film that, you know, is centered in the cafeteria, but really kind of expands outward. But in Boxed, uh, Andy is stuck in this one room and we have all the action and Tommy's taking place in one area. I, I, that was the last thing I wanted to ask you before I ask other filmmakers some questions. Where did you shoot this film? 
we shot it in a house uh, in in just outside of Oxford. We'd originally looked at a house in London and uh, mm -hmm. a sort of Regency townhouse, but for various reasons, COVID costs, we had to we had to look outside London. Mm. Uh, but we wanted to look for um, a location that, because as you say, is so focused on that one room, um, had allowed us to create that kind of you know uh, sort of boxed in atmosphere, yeah. much like much like this other film on the panel. Um, that that kind of closed in feeling with the wood and the tapestry and and, and, mm. and the curtains and great and Alam, where did you shoot your film? I shot mine in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, is that where you yeah, live Brooklyn. too, or is are you still living in Jersey, or did you move out to Brooklyn? No, no, I'm I'm in Jersey, but um, I just happened to find this place that was perfect and um, budget wise, it was great. And just the once we saw the hallways, we said this is the place and. That was that kind of did it. Was it a COVID film as well? Um, made during COVID? No, it was during COVID. Um, yeah, and no, I, I I'm not sure. Like if it, I mean, at that point, everything was much more relaxed. So it was, but it was during the period where COVID was still around. Cool. And Evan, your film is a thesis film. Was it a film that you made? You're you just graduated from Syracuse Syracuse University with an MFA. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Just Congratulations. Graduated. Thank you. Um, yeah. So Spot for Frog was my second year film. It was a three year program um, and it was shot actually right on campus in the same building where I like take classes and everything. So it was fun to be kind of going to classes, learning about uh, film things and also sort of looking at the locations and, and dreaming about kind of filming uh, right there in the building. Tell us about your lead actors. <laughs> really great. Yeah, I agree that uh, they, they did an amazing job. Um, I found them through um, just like backstage casting mm. uh, and they were, were actually a grad student at my same university in, in a different program, um, but could play a high school uh, student I felt uh, really uh, successfully and um, I think related to the character and related to the, the script so that emotional resonance kind of translates in their performance I feel. Wonderful. And tell us a little bit about the process of merging the animation with live action. Yeah. Um, so I did all the animation myself and it was kind of a, a mix of um, digital techniques and, and um, hands-on sort of techniques. Um, but working a lot with kind of visualizing beforehand so that I could tell people on set kind of what, what things would look like post um, animation. And then um, just a lot of kind of time and care and effort expended to um, kind of each frame working, uh, looking at the live action and also kind of painting on top of it and thinking always kind of how can I externalize uh, what the character's feeling internally because um, they're a very sort of quiet character that um, has a complicated inner world that I can kind of bring out through the, the visual aesthetics. And yeah. I guess, my, why don't you guys ask each other questions? Does anybody have a question to ask one of the other filmmakers? Um, yeah, one of the questions I wanted to know was um, the animation process. Um, for me, animation is so mysterious. So how did you go about that? Yeah, um, so it was honestly, it was, this was only my second time kind of trying it out. And I'm sort of self-taught as an animator. So a lot of it is experimenting and figuring out as I went along. Um, so it was, it was mysterious for me too. Um, but Procreate on, on my iPad is an, an app that I used um, that allowed me to kind of animate little bits at a time with references from the live action uh, footage, and then just kind of compositing everything together in layers. Um, it's kind of how I approached it, but definitely process of learning and discovering all along the way for me as, as I was working on it. Do you, do, you think of your, do you think of your film as an animation or as a short? Which was one of the things the judges uh, argued about. So I'm curious to see what your take is. I think you submitted it as a short, correct? I think so. Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, that's kind of a, a difficulty I face when when submitting to festivals, deciding kind of which classification to to put it under. Um, and it's funny that that's kind of relevant to the the film as a whole, kind of thinking about binaries and thinking about um, getting outside of these boxes that people are put into and, and kind of, I guess, the mode that I'm working in is also kind of blurring binaries or blur outside of kind of the these categories that we um, define it as. So I guess both a, a mix of live action and animation and thinking about the relationship between the two. Very cool. Anybody else? Uh, you guys have a question for Alam or Evan? I mean, I think for, for both of you, actually, um, I mean, unlike our film, both of your films are scored. 
Um, so what was the, how, what was, how did that, pro how was that process kind of worked out? Did you, had you brought composers in beforehand? Was it, take us through it. <laughs> Great question. Uh, for me, it was someone I worked with uh, from Scotland and I w had worked with him on my last short film as well. And he did an amazing job on there. And for this one, I just wanted the music to be very weird and out of the ordinary. So I just gave him some references. Tom Waits was one of the references. And I just said, told him, use as many sounds as you can and make them as weird as possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the initial, um, like the initial composition was a bit too safe. He was just, let, he was kind of saying that, let me just see how this works. And then we just went back, make it weirder, make it weirder. And then we got to this point. And when he sent me this, I was like, this is it. And it just worked out. So did he did he score to the finished film or did he? Score yeah, it was afterward. He he okay. he came on afterwards once it was completed. Cool. What about you, Evan? Yeah, uh, so for me, I, I composed it myself. Um, and it was kind of a an interesting process of like, um, because usually the score does come after, but I was working along the way, kind of editing a little bit visually, writing the music as I went, animating kind of everything at once, um, because I, I wanted the visuals to really correspond with the music a lot. Uh, and since I was the one who was doing all the animation and all of the music, it all just sort of flowed together in a, in a creative process where it was sort of one language that I was working with. Um, that was a lot of fun just working in in logic and, and combining different instruments to kind of create a um, sort of whimsical, unique uh, sonic uh, landscape for it. Wonderful. Um, do you have a question, Evan, for somebody else? Um, yeah, I guess um, if both of you maybe could talk about the the production design or how you arrived at, at kind of the um, the sets that you have, because I felt both of them were, were really strong. Um, with Tommy's kind of transporting us into this other time period and then with with box it kind of felt like uh, his apartment itself was a box and then with all these kind of pop culture references on the walls that it's kind of I think relates to the theme a lot um, so I'd be curious to hear sort of your your strategies or, or approaches to that you guys want to go first <laughs> uh we have um a production designer that we've worked with uh, before uh, sensei Ben and he um research the period each item of furniture was carefully researched and um what we found when we found the location even though the actual location was period accurate most of the furniture in these old english houses ends up being a mixture of the victorian and the 30s and mm -hmm. so it's a real case of looking at every single item trying to figure out when it might have been made what we needed to swap out what we needed to get in from rental houses yeah. um it was, it was a big job that he did on a on what was kind of a shoestring for the yeah. scale of it. I mean, there was there was a bear in the house that had been shot by, by on a hunting trip by Zara Nicholas, for instance, <laughs> yeah. and I had to go because that was Victorian. <laughs> but I think the thing with period, like, and it's probably the same with your film, um, Alan, as well, is that you kind of have to, you know, make it look like um, like nothing has been changed. Um, but obviously everything that you see from the particular sofa choices to the sort of the, the vases and the candelabra and the flower arrangements, that's the real trick um, is, is to... The, the the art director almost disappears into the film when, when, when they do their job well cool yeah absolutely and for me it was um you know this person is addicted to consumerism so he is just buying everything there's no theme or there's no plan of what he buys he just orders anything he can get his hands on or as the quicker the swipe the better so it was just basically to bombard the place with boxes and just posters and everything that we can find. And it was just working with my production designer to kind of just make the place look completely filled, but be surrounded by sort of lifelessness. If you look at the colors, it's very, there's hardly any green and the green that's in, it's almost like a rusty decaying green. So he's essentially decaying in this environment. So just from the wallpaper that we put up to just empty boxes lying around that have been there for eight, you know, ages supposedly in this story. So it was just surrounding with everything that we possibly can. I, I just thought your films are just amazing. And I think, you know, the fact that my job is the jury. I, I do sit on some of the juries. I don't think I sat on, I did sit on the Tommy's jury, but I didn't sit on um, Alam's film 
or um, Evans Film on their juries. And so the, but in general, they, the films are selected and then I, here I have 35 films and I have to find a home for them on the schedule. And so all three films are not playing on the same days. Um, Evans and Alams are playing on June 2nd, which is our opening uh, day. And um, uh, Tommy's is playing on our last day. So it, it just kind of worked out that way. But I thought, again, because of the themes, what would work well, um, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys were able to join us today. So what I'd like to do now is um, share screen and show folks how they can get tickets and stuff like that. So share screen, Albert. And normally the way things would work is this is our website, which is um, njfilmfest.com. And uh, this is the space that we'll be screening movies. Um, the festival is a hybrid, which means that Every program will be online for 24 hours on their show date. And we've been using Eventive since the pandemic broke. And now even Sundance is using Eventive. They're really great. Technical problems have been at a minimum. And, and so we're really happy to be working with them. But we have opened up nine of the 11 programs will be in person. And I wanted to do more um, uh, to do all of them in person, but we have this space, which is the Rutgers University. Um, uh, it's basically a lecture hall, but it's been soundproof. The seats have been graded. I mean, I was involved in the upgrading of this room so that was cinema friendly and it has high definition projection and a really nice sound system. But this is the space where the live screenings will be taking place either at five o'clock or seven o'clock for nine of the 11 screenings. And then what you would do is once you get here, you can scroll up or you can just hit current events, which will do that for you. And you will see 2023 New Jersey International Film Festival here with basic information. The festival is taking place from June 2nd to the 11th on weekends. So there'll be screenings on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays between those dates. And one ticket costs $15. It's good for the virtual and the in-person screening. So you can do both. And yes, we have some crazy people that watch the film during the day. And then they come that evening, watch them again, and then ask questions to the many visiting filmmakers that will be there. If you want to save money, you can do that by getting an all access pass, which is $100, which saves you about $70. Um, if you're a student, you can come to the in-person shows, they're only $10, but that's just for the live screenings. So what you really do need to do though, once you've gotten here is to click on the buy tickets link, which bounces you to our eventive website and which has a welcome page that has three, four buttons one to buy the all access pass, one which is the primary catalog page, which has um, all of the individual programs divided by um, genre. And this one features a spot for frog is the first image that pops up, but there are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies. And each little box opens up to information about each film that we'll be screening. And as you can see, in four days, our opening program, which is Schwartz Program One, um, will be taking place all day for 24 hours or at seven o'clock in person. And uh, the Chosen One director will be there, and that's Elzar. Um, Alam will be there. I believe Corey's gonna be there too. Um, Bowling for Eva. Uh, Elfie's going to be there. She lives in Brooklyn. Joshua lives in Pennsylvania. He will be there. And Evan's stuck in, in uh, Denver or someplace in Colorado. And hopefully we'll be sending an emissary for his film to the screening. Um, I go back to festival site is a good place to go. And you can get more information. You can go to schedule. And this is a linear way to see images and blurbs about each film. Each program is divided by a red line and that tells you where and when it's going to be taking place. And then you can also go to the film guide, which also has descriptions about each one of the films that we're going to be screening. And since Tommy's is going to be screening on um, June 11th, only online though, that was one of the things that I couldn't figure out how could I squeeze in-person screenings and these films were selected by the jury. I had no I had no hand in which ones were going to be screened in person 
or online. Um, but my job is to find homes for all the films. And it seemed like this program would be a nice fit for Tommy's, which is going to be an online program that's going to be on uh, June 11th. Let's see if I can find that one for you. And there'll be all sorts of different types of movies. There's animation, there's shorts that are narrative, and then there's documentaries too. So I'm going to go back to the festival site. And again, basic information is here. If you need parking, you need to register your car if you're going to be coming and our sponsors and our staff. I'm gonna stop sharing because I pretty much have done everything I wanted to do. I wanna thank you all for hanging out with us for the last half hour or so. And we're really excited to show your films. We don't show crap, we show excellent films. And there are a lot of festivals that'll show anything local. We don't do that. It has to be a good Jersey film if it's gonna be from New Jersey. And we have a lot of Jersey films this year because there were a lot of good ones. But I, I'm so, thankful for you guys to hang out with us and talk about your movies and we look forward to screening it and um thanks again for hanging out thank you thank you thank you